Hello everybody and welcome back to the Signal processing playlist. The main topic of this video is the generation of time series data from power spectral density. The lecture is divided in two parts. In the first part of the lecture we will talk about the algorithm to generate time series data from a given power spectral density curve. In the second part instead we will implement this algorithm in Compose. In order to have a good understanding of the algorithm, it's useful that you are familiar with concepts such as the power spectral density, the discrete Fourier transform, and the inverse discrete Fourier transform. And let's start. A typical use case we might face in engineering fields such as vibration analysis is to excite our structure with a certain time signal and to do some post-processing. Many times, though, we do not have that time signal. What we have instead is a power spectral density curve. So from the power spectral density curve we need to get that time signal. And this is the problem that we are about to tackle in a few seconds. But before, let's understand why we are given a power spectral density curve instead of a time domain signal. The reason is that the power spectral density is representative of the whole random process, while the time signal is just one realization of this random process. And now we can move to the algorithm. The first step is to define the time length of the time series data. From this time length we can retrieve the frequency resolution. The second step is to define the frequency range. Here we are tackling the most general case, which means that the starting and ending frequency of our range do not coincide with the starting and ending frequency of the power spectral density curve we are given. In order to generate the time array, we have to know the sampling frequency. Given the final frequency of our PSD curve, we can obtain the sampling frequency through the Nike's theorem. The third step is to sample the PSD curve in the selected range. The sampling step is given by the frequency resolution. We can also easily build the frequency vector and assign a PSD value equal to zero to those frequencies which are outside of our frequency range. The fourth step is to compute the single-sided and normalized amplitude of the discrete Fourier transform. To do that, we can leverage the inverse of this formula. In order to build our time series data, we also need information regarding the phase. But this information is lost in the power spectral density. So how can we retrieve that? And this leads us to the fifth step. We generate a random phase for each amplitude value of the discrete Fourier transform. And this is the reason why from the same PSD curve we can create infinite realizations of a time series. Now that we have both the amplitude and the phase, we just need to retrieve the discrete Fourier transform coefficients in the real and imaginary format. To do that, we unfold the single-sided and normalized spectrum. We switch from amplitude phase representation to the real imaginary one leveraging the Euler formula, and we apply some scaling to reverse the normalization. The last step is to compute the inverse discrete Fourier transform, which is a linear combination of harmonic waves. And we can leverage the inverse fast Fourier transform algorithm. These are all the steps of the algorithm, and its implementation in Compose is straightforward. So, let's move to the Compose. First of all, let's load the PSD curve. For sake of simplicity, we have stored it in a .mat file, which is the native format for Compose. We can plot it, and notice that it is in decibels, as you can read on the y-axis. Now, we can define the final time, which will determine the frequency resolution. Then we define the frequency range and we get the sampling frequency leveraging the Nyquist theorem. 
knowing the sampling frequency and the final time, we can build the time vector. At this point, we can perform the sampling of the PSD curve. So we build the frequency vector and we leverage the built-in interp1 function. We set the PSD values to zero outside the frequency range. Since we are using dB, this is equal to set to minus infinite. And we can plot it. The red dots represent the sample PSD that we will use to generate our time series data. And let's do that. So we move to the single sided spectrum using the inverse of this formula. But before doing that, let's remove the dB scale. Now we need to add the random phase. We can leverage the built in random number generator. This function gives back a matrix whose size is specified by the first and second arguments and whose values are random number between 0 and 1. Hence, we multiply it by 2pi to have a random phase between 0 and 2pi. The next step is to retrieve the discrete Fourier transform coefficients in the real imaginary representation. So we unfold the single-sided one and we switch from the amplitude phase representation to the real imaginary one and we scale it to reverse the normalization. The last step is to leverage the inverse fast Fourier transform algorithm in order to generate the time series data from the discrete Fourier transform coefficients. And let's plot it. We can see that the time length is the one that we have set at the beginning. And also, the sample time is coherent with the sampling frequency we set. Now, we can check if the implementation of the algorithm is correct by computing the power spectral density of this time signal. We can leverage the P. Welch algorithm and let's overlap this plot to the sample PSD and to the PSD curve. Zooming the plot, we can see that the power spectral density we have computed from the signal is completely overlapped to the simple one. We can also notice that outside the frequency range we have defined, the PSD values are zero, which in a dB scale is equivalent to a negative number with a big absolute value. Rerunning the script multiple times, we see that the power spectral density we get is the same, but the time signal is changing, which is coherent with what we have said before. From the same PSD, we can get infinite realizations of a time series. We can try to change the frequency range, and the sampled PSD and the computed one are still overlapped. We can also try to change the final time, and now the signal gets shorter. Since we can get infinite signals from the same PSD curve, we can set additional criteria to select the time signal. If the generated time signal respects the criteria, we keep it. Otherwise, we discard it and we generate a new one. For example, we can check the crest factor of the signal. The crest factor is a parameter which indicates how extreme the peaks are in the signal. And it is computed through this formula. We can easily implement it in Compose. So we just type the formula. Our selection criteria will be to have the crest factor greater than a certain value. And through the if statement, we can verify if it is satisfied or not. Here, a short recap of what we have seen in this lecture. We have explained why in certain applications the PSD curve is preferred to a single time signal, and it is because the PSD is representative of the whole random process. We have built and implemented and composed the algorithm to generate time series data from a PSD curve. And finally, we have showed how to add additional selection criteria such as the crest factor. And that's it. 
You will find all the material we have used in the Model Based Development Forum. I also invite you to use this forum to ask any question about this lecture. I will be glad to reply to all of them. Feel free also to post any other question you might have while using Compose. Lastly, and maybe more important, don't hesitate to share in the forum your achievements with Compose. The whole community will benefit from it. See you at the next video.